Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone out there in YouTube world. Here we are in our study, Praising God Through Prayer and Worship. And uh, I can see all of everything in my glasses. Sorry. <laughs> you can see what's on my desk. <laughs> But don't be looking. <laughs> we're supposed to be studying God's word. Today we're looking at Psalms uh, 124 and 125. And it's a bit lonely in the room today, but that's okay because the Lord is with us and he's here to help us. So let's study together, shall we? Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that uh, we can greet you with a, a joyful heart each morning as we rise. We know that every breath that we take is your breath given to us. Every heartbeat that beats is your heartbeat beating in us. And Father God, I just ask that you'd help me through this study to be clear, to uh, hear your voice, and to speak only the words that you would have me speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, so I'm going to start by reading Psalm 123, and you can read along because I've got it up here on a, oops, that's the wrong thing. Whoops, let's go back. I got it on the wrong page already. <laughs> and I wanted to apologize to everyone because I did have technical issues going on <laughs> the last time, well, a couple of times, and I forgot to um, hit record and things like that and uh, you know and sometimes things crash and our internet has crashed a couple of times and I'm just warning and I'm being forewarned right now it's sunny but be earlier this morning um, as I woke up we had a thunderstorm and that could mean the power outage but anyway the Lord knows he's looking after us so let's read together shall we a song of ascents. Excuse me. And we looked at this and, uh, excuse me, discovered that these were made for when Israel was going up to the temple. They've given us a title there, but we're not going to use that today. A song of ascents of David. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, had it not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the waters would have engulfed us. The stream would have swept over our soul. Then the raging waters would have swept over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trapper. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So, yes, so singing this song as we go up, as we go up to worship. All right, I'm going to start my marking now. And of course, you're going to hear me pausing. I've got my study tools all out here on my desk and hopefully... I've got enough is what I need. All right, <clears throat> let's go. Had it not been the Lord, and that's all caps, meaning Jehovah, who is on our side, let Israel now say. Can you just hear this in the song? I can. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. So there's a, there have been a problem and uh, they, the psalmist is reminding in this song that the Lord was on their side when men rose up against because something would have happened. Then they would have swallowed us alive. So that's saying that the enemy was so great. Oh, and now, you know what? I'm going to mark. When men rose up against us, because we've got down to verse three, then they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us. I'm going to mark the men as, uh, as I have been marking enemy. Well, I would, but my pen has given way. There we go. 
when men rose up against us, then they, that's those men, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger, and I always mark anger, I mark it like a red hot, was kindled. That's a burning. That's If you use kindling, you start a fire. Kindle. Then their anger, oh, when their anger was killed, kindled against us. Oh, Adrian's coming in. Just hang on a second. Just pause yourselves just a minute. I'm just going to let her in the room. I know it's going to seem a little weird to you. Morning, Ren. I'll get her up here so that we can find her. And we'll go there. Oh, she's not in yet. Let me just see, make sure I get her in here. On my camera. There she is. There she is. In her radiant splendor. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Okay, so we got I got started already, and we're in Psalm 124. I'm looking at verse 3 right now, and I have considered that uh, then they would have swallowed us alive. I'm marking those as uh, in, in verse 2, it was men rose up against us, and I'm counting that as enemies. Okay. And so... Um, um, men rose up against us, and that, so it's uh, in verse 3, they would have swallowed us alive, and their anger was kindled against us. Now, I wanted to point out too here, um, that when we see the term, when we see the words when and then, those are references to times. So you see here in verses, uh, look, one through five, that's one segment, one through five, all of those, yeah. oops, are, have whens and then. Okay. So now their anger was kindled. So I'm marking that like fire because fire burns. And just, if anybody wants to know how I do it, I make a red fire. Uh, I underline in a red and then I make a flame around it and then um, I put orange inside so I can see it. That's how I do it. And for me, anger is always red because when I'm angry, I'm kind of red hot. I'm sure you are too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Verse four. Okay, so we have when men rose up, then they would have swallowed us. When their anger was kindled against us. And this is all one sentence. Then the, okay, and we mark the waters. I always do that. Then the waters would have engulfed us. Hey, engulfed implies water. Gulf. Yes. The stream. Okay, so now. <clears throat> the stream would have swept over our soul. I haven't marked Israel here uh, as who it is because this is a song of a sense and we're assuming that's who it is. But we also want to make this practical for those of us who are not of Israel. Okay. The waters would have engulfed us. The stream would have swept over our soul. So that's like a, 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 a bit of a time of drowning. Would have drowned us. Okay. Now, verse 5 repeats it. Then the raging waters. Now, that's got a bit of a moral qualification. The way, raging waters would have swept over our soul. So this is using poetic um, emphasis in repetition. Yes. In the beginning, the first verse, it says, has it not, had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, had it not been the Lord who was on our side. So you can hear how that would be a, a song when you have that repetition kind of going on. Mm -hmm. Now, and the same thing here is, uh, then the waters would have engulfed us. The stream would have swept over our soul. Then the raging waters would have swept over our soul. 
Well, I can certainly hear how that that would be set to music. But I'm not going to sing it for you today. <laughs> okay, so that's the first segment of this. All right, so now um, you can continue where I left off in the marking because you're here. Okay. Blessed. Mm -hmm. And I always mark that. Be the Lord. Mm. Who, and I would just, hold on, who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. Mm -hmm. I would say that would be God. Yeah. And uh, Adrian just did uh, what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to read to the end of the sentence to make sure you got the context right. And so, um, who is the there who that's in there? Who I'm marking that as the enemy. Yeah, I think that's the way it is too. Our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trapper. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Look at that nice repetition there too. Okay, now I have to, okay, I, I have to do this. I have to go back into my concordance because we've seen enough of the word soul that I think I'm yes. going to start marking it. So I'm going back here to see how I marked it. Did you mark well, it? it? Oh, I already marking. did. I did mark it. Okay. All right, so I marked it in the same way as I mark when I see the Holy Spirit, only in a different color. So, <clears throat> you can do as you please. So, so, oh, I did mark so. All right, well then let's go back and mark it because we saw it in verse 4. The stream would have swept over our soul. Trying to find the right color. And now, of course, you know, we could probably go back and um, mark it in other psalms where we didn't. <laughs> I just realized I'd mark so. Mm, yeah, you know what? I should have thought of that earlier in when we were studying. Okay, so it's in verse 4 and it's in verse 5. Our soul, and then verse 7, our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trapper. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Okay, you know what? I might even mark escaped. Like, yeah, there, I want to mark that a certain way because to me that seems to be a poignant. Yes, to me that's, you know what? I'm marking it like I mark salvation. Um, and I'm going to tell you why here. Okay, you ready? Yeah. It says in verse 6, Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. Our oh, soul has sense. escaped. So the Lord has made the way of escape. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of a trapper. And that's very poetic. The snare is broken. And we have escaped. Well, you know, that is very, when you think about this, um, the Lord rescued us out of our sin, despair, our former way of life. And we have escaped. We have broken the snare of the evil one who and had us entrapped our whole lives from our birth. And the Lord has made a way for us to be escaped. Okay, so good. And, and um, you know, for there are some of us, myself included, who were entrapped in, I, I, I was, okay, I, I'm going to say the word addiction, but it wasn't an addiction like you would think of it, not alcohol or drugs or anything like that, but a way of life that had me entrapped. And as I've said before, it was the world of the occult, which has all of those other things implied in it. But um, just being entrapped in that demonic, by the demonic forces, really. The snare is broken and I have escaped. Okay. Okay. So verse eight, what are we going to do here? 
Our help is in the name of the Lord. Now we have the name of the Lord again. Yes, we do. And help. I mark that. I've always been marking that like salvation. Well, I'm going to see if I marked it because I don't remember. Mm. Nope, I haven't been marking it. Okay. So I have to decide how to mark it. And I'm going to, I have a ruler somewhere in this. <laughs> I found mine. <laughs> I have a ruler. So our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So this is acknowledging uh, Jehovah God, because the name of the Lord, if I go back to this uh, screenshot that I have. Uh, our help is in the name of the Lord. And so that's all caps that indicates Jehovah who made heaven and earth. Well, that's the, the ma our maker, our maker. Our maker doesn't want us to be uh, entrapped and enslaved and ensnared and drowning and, right. sw and swallowed up. Our maker does not want us that way. He sent Jesus to pay the penalty so that we could become friends of God. And that, uh, you know, the, uh, and, and to receive an inheritance as we learned in first Peter, was that first Peter, which is imperishable, shall not spoil or fade. I believe it's first Peter reserved in heaven for us. Okay. Now, for those of you who are watching here, and fortunately I am recording today <laughs> and live streaming. <laughs> First and Second Peter are very short books. You can read them easily <laughs> in, an, in a short period of time. Well, that is just a wonderful thing. Do you know what? Okay, so now I would like to entitle this whole thing. I'm And I have to do it, something about the snare. God has broken the snare. I want a pencil and I can't find my pencil. Oh, there it is. I'm coming back to this page here. Um, and I'm doing that because that's a, a significant thing for me. You can do what you like. God has broken a uh, and I'm, and I might say, God has broken what ensnared me. Oh, I had God has rescued me from the snare. Oh, I like that too. Good job. Good job. I like that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when we're reading this, so we haven't talked about this for a long time, but um, it's really good to personal, personalize this. I'm going to read it once more and personalize it um, so that you understand how you can read when you when you've read it once through and you decide whether or not this is something that can be true uh, said to be true of you personally as a believer as a christian believer then you can personalize these things and make them make yes. them your own okay exactly. had, it, had it not been the lord who was on my side I now say, had it not been the Lord who was on my side when men rose up against me, then they would have swallowed me alive. When their anger was kindled against me, then the waters would have engulfed me. The stream would have swept over my soul. Then the raging waters would have swept over my soul. And here's the con contrast, right? This contrast between first part and second part. Blessed be the Lord who has not given me to be torn by their teeth. My soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trapper. The snare is broken and I have escaped. My help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now, how wonderful is that? To be able to personalize like that. I just think it's marvelous myself. Be, uh, because it is true. All right. So now let's, uh, now that we've done that, let's go on 
to Psalm 125, and you can read for me, please. Okay. Those who trust in the Lord are as Mount Zion, <coughs> excuse me, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the land of the righteous, so that the righteous will not put forth their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. But as for those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the doers of iniquity. Peace be upon Israel. Oh, boy. Just this morning, I was listening to some converse, well, you know, reading some conversations of friends of mine on Facebook in a group. And there are people who are convinced in this beautiful land of Canada where we live that people are going to rise up and make our world right again in politics. Now we have a I've seen that too. We are approaching we are approaching um a provincial election and soon a federal election. And of course, people are getting their hopes up in politics and politicians. And I always just seem to be a Debbie Downer <laughs> because I do not see the Bible, the Lord mentioning North America anywhere in the Bible. I do not, not I do not see him mentioning sparing that. And and what is so heartbreaking to me is this. <clears throat> Let's read Psalm 125 again and see what God says <clears throat> about these matters, because I think it is very clear right here in this Psalm, what God says about these matters of politics and hopefulness in government. And I want to point some things out about our country and our culture. Okay, mm -hmm. so start again. And did we mark trust? Oh my goodness! Back. I did. Me. Did you? Okay, so I'm going to go back. P Q R S T T. I'm still in the S's. Tr true, truth. I marked truth, trustworthy trust. I, I didn't. Oh, oh do you know what? Ah, ha, ha. How did you mark it? I mark truth, trustworthy, and trust all in the same way. Okay. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, oh, did you? Wait, you mark truth in the same way. I can't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it. It's just that it's easier for me to remark it one yes. way. And then when I see it a different, when I see something different about it, then I can change, I can just shaded in or something yes yes uh, and you know what though so i'm going to mark trust from now on like i mark faith if i have faith i trust that's my personal thing you can no, everybody else can do however they please but that's what i'm going to do because i want to first mark i want to see how i mark faith Okay, so I'm, I can color it in in that pink color. That's what I can do. You can do. Trust, because it says confidence, hope. Well, I could put make it market like a mark hope, but I'm not going to. There. Now trust is marked a certain way. Because I mark faithful the same way. And faithful, you know, if you have trustworthy that comes up, you can mark that. Okay, so here we go. Um, uh. 125. Those who trust in the Lord are as Mount Zion. And I marked Mount Zion. Yes. And so how do we mark Mount Zion? I marked it with like a little mountain type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I don't know why I, okay. All right, good. Yes. So I'm going to do that too. Because that's Which cannot I'm... be moved, but abides forever. Oh, Excuse oh, me. oh. So forever. I've got to mark that. Well, isn't that very interesting? Mount Zion. Yes, it is actually. Mm -hmm. 
Mount Zion, which ab abides forever. Okay, so now who, who is like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever? Those who trust in the Lord. So who does that include? Us. Yes. Good. Okay, so that was a period. Abides forever. Period. Verse 2. As the mountains surround Jerusalem. Now I'm going to mark Jerusalem a different way than I marked Yeah, but Israel. you have that in, uh, oh, were you here for 122? Yeah. Excuse me, it's there. And I, I send my apologies again to our viewers who missed out on that study. That was an excellent conversation and discussion we had on Psalms 122 and 123. And I'm sorry I didn't record it. So sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. I am so recording Lord, now, right? I am. I am. Am I? Yeah. Good. <laughs> so the Lord surrounds his people. Okay. So now in this case, his people is speaking about whom? Israel. Yeah, but who is included in that? Us. Yeah, but you know, in a way, it's more. I, I, it's more Israel I have than to, us. I have to question whether all believers are are going to go because some are true believers and some are not. Well, we're not talking about people who are not true believers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just because they're not his people. You're not. Head. Yeah. No. Yes. No. But that's a good point. But not everyone who call like not everyone who says they're a Christian is. That's a horrible thought, uh, but it's true. There are so many people who are who are not because they've never put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ's sacrifice. They may they may label themselves Christian and may they may believe they are. But and and we can't know really. We can't know one from another who is and who isn't. We only know that the Holy Spirit testifies to our own spirit that we are children of God. That's what the Bible says. But we also know that there are false people who, who come among believers to lead us astray as we learned about false prophets and all of that in, in our study in Second Peter. And that there are, there are people who, got, like the enemy, has his emissaries who go into churches to destroy churches and to rob people of their faith. That's the purpose, right? So we know that. We already know that. So we're not making assumptions. Uh, we can tell by their fruit. We can tell by who they glorify, if they're glorifying themselves or if they're glorifying Jesus Christ, because there's a lot of people who can say, God, God, Jesus said, many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this and that? And they might even do mighty miracles, but Jesus will say, I never knew you. So... <clears throat> We can't make a judgment on people, but we can certainly learn to discern. Exactly. And that's all my point. So uh, those of you who are watching, I'm not questioning your salvation and I'm not causing you to doubt your salvation, but because once you are saved, you cannot lose it because you're inscribed in the Lord's hand. It's not your power that saved you. It's his. And he keeps his promises. <laughs> But, you know, when we see people who are falling away, maybe they never were saved to begin with. Or maybe they're in a, yeah, I mean, well, anyway, we're not going there. Okay, so as the mountains surround Jerusalem, okay, so here is the thing. <clears throat> we're in this in verse two, because it doesn't have to do with the people. It never has. Read this whole thing again, verse two. Okay. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. So who does it have to do with? Believers. Who, no. who, who, no, no, I'm, that's not what I'm, I'm not talking about believers. I'm talking about whose power is it? Is it the believer's power? Is it the people's power? No, it's God's power? power. It's God. And this is what, you know, from this time forth and forever. So Okay, remember, this is a sound, this is a song of ascent when people are going up to Jerusalem. They're going up the steps to the temple. It's a song of ascent. So <clears throat> this is an acknowledgement. It's not the people keeping themselves safe. It's not because they are 
his people in name. It's not because they're Jews or, or believers or whatever, or Christians. It's not that. It's because God, the Lord surrounds his people from this time and forever. That means that, you know. Exactly. Right? All right. Now, there's a four. For the scepter of wickedness. Okay, so now I'm just, I underlined that all, and wickedness is uh, marked with a box, like I do for sin. Okay, for the scepter of wickedness. Shall not rest upon the land of the righteous. Okay, so now this is a place, the land of the righteous, and so I'm marking this as a place. I've got to mark righteous the same way. Yeah, I mark everything else. It always, but I get to underline right underline the rest of it. <laughs> okay. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the land of the righteousness of the righteous. That's a place. So that the righteous. Will not put forth their hands to do wrong. Okay, there is the righteous. Well, yes. To do wrong. Come on, come on. To do wrong. I'm marking that as wickedness, of course. Doing wrong. Okay, so now. Um. This is very qualifying. There's a there's qualifiers in here. I think people are claiming. Okay, so this is what was bugging me this morning about the conversation that people were having about, um, you know, these good politicians. These good politicians. Give me a break. <laughs> there's no such thing. <laughs> there's no such thing. <laughs> Okay, so they're thinking these new good politicians are going to rise up with the people and they're going to overthrow the wicked ones that are in place. And from my perspective, of biblical worldview, let's just say that, there is no one righteous, no, not one. And what people are putting their hope in, in politics, and I don't care what country you're talking about. You could talk about any European country. You can talk about any Asian country, North American, South American, whatever. There is no such thing as a good politician. Because by nature, <clears throat> I mean, they might be a good person, I'm not saying that they're not. I'm not saying that they could be a redeemed and godly person. I'm not saying that they're not that. But politics is wicked. <laughs> it's, utterly, oh, yeah. it's utterly corrupt. And there's nothing you can do to uncorrupt it. I don't even want to be in to discuss politics. Cause... No, no, but I, 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 we need to in this session because... <clears throat> okay. Because what I think people are doing is they're claiming the blessing of righteousness when they're not even righteous. Does that make sense? Or they're putting faith in people. And I'm not saying that God doesn't use these people to bring forth his righteousness. Okay, I'm not saying that. He does. He does do that. But I think that people placing their faith in politics and politicians is a vain hope. Yes. And because what God has ordained as good government is really a benign dictatorship. <laughs> what, they, what we would label as a benign dictatorship but the people will not accept the rulership of the Lord God. No. They won't. 
No. And if you look at the history of Israel, who wanted to have kings like the other nations, and they begged God for a king, he gave them Saul, who who had a bad end when he really had chosen David. But David, of course, was a man like everybody else, and he sinned. But he was called a man after God's own heart. But after that, the kings of Israel got worse and worse. Oh, yeah. And I think there's only two. I could be corrected here, but I think in all of Israel's history, there were only two, two kings that were called good. In all of Israel's history, and even so, one of them went terribly bad in the end. So did not finish well. I can't remember about King Josiah. I can't remember what happened to him. But there was King Hezekiah, who was a good king, but he went bad in the end. And so, okay. So when we look at this verse, verse 3, I think that people are claiming some kind of um, claim to this as if it is going to be true because of the elections in North America or in Europe, where it says, For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the land of the righteous, so that the righteous will not put forth their hands to do wrong. Well, I, I, I can't. I hate to say this, but the scepter of wickedness has been on Canada for a long time. Well, I'm telling you that any, any, any country that kills God's new little babies before they're even born cannot even hint at be, at calling themselves righteous. I agree. And that's just one thing. But that is the, to me, that is the most offensive. See, that is what wickedness is railing against because the righteous are saying, no, this is not righteous. And this was not godly judgment to put in a law that allowed the wholesale murder of millions of little of God's new babies. The, thi the, the little people that he created in their mother's wombs. Exactly. So... So we cannot claim any iota of this promise. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the land of the righteous because we are not the land of the righteous. No. And, and so that the righteous will not put for their hands to do wrong. Okay. So uh, another thing that I was thinking of this morning was, um, Christians, when I was a child in elementary school, and that was in the 60s, <clears throat> we could still say the Lord's Prayer and all of that kind of thing in our public schools. But it was at that very time that, <clears throat> that uh, uh, people in the background who were influencing the educational systems, which educates believers and non-believers alike because we're all there, right? In that, um, or we have been of my age and, and younger anyway, um, <clears throat> to remove prayer from the public s square and to remove prayer from, um, public education. The truth of the matter is that no one, no one can tell you how, when, where, why, or how you shall pray. Sorry. No one can do it. What happened was that Christian believers ceded that authority over. They gave, they gave the authority over to, to a secular, godless system, which has no say in the matter. And so the same is still true. Nobody can tell you how, when, where, or why, or how to pray. Nobody. Nobody. That's between you and your God. And no one can take that away. 
if you give it over, you've given it over. And rather than training us, me, when I was a young person, rather than training me to stand firm in faith and to and all the promises of God, the whole mass of people just went along with the flow that says, oh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. We can't pray here. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so that's why we're in this situation, so that the righteous will not put forth their hands to do wrong. Well, I'm telling you that the righteous have put their hands forward to do wrong. And, it, and so we, as believers who are sealed in our hearts and in our foreheads with the Holy Spirit, there is, we need to be repenting all the time for our country. We can't say, oh, bless us, Lord, bless us, Lord, bless us, Lord, without saying this great wickedness, this great wickedness that we have permitted in our land. Exactly. Okay. All right. So that's my rant for the day. <laughs> well, maybe it's not the end one, but <laughs> okay. So now uh, in this Psalm 125, <clears throat> um, we go on, uh, it's a new sect segment, verse four. Okay. So here we go. Let's go. Do good, O Lord. I don't know if I marked good or not. So think I think we're marking it like righteous I think that's a good idea to those who are good to those who are upright in their hearts right so this is the qualifier right do good to those who are good and those who are upright in their hearts. That doesn't mean that you never sin or you, go, you never go astray or you never make a mistake or, or something doesn't overtake you, right? Right. Those who are upright in their hearts. Now, this is Old Testament language um, in a way, but it still applies today. Okay, now we have a contrast. So we mark but, upright like righteousness, right? So yeah, I did. Okay, now in the, in the contrast word is. But, but. As for those who turn aside to their crooked ways. Okay, turn aside. Remember I was marking with that uh, arrow, but I'm doing it with black. If I was doing it in repentance, I would mark it a different way, but this is black hearted. Turn aside. Where am I? Those who of their crooked to their crooked ways, which I'm going to mark as sin. Yes. The Lord mm -hmm. will lead them away. With the doers of iniquity. The doers of iniquity. So we can mark that uh, kind of the same. Do you know what? Verses four and five. Or verse, yeah, I'm just going to mark that. I'm going to highlight that. Because that is a really good prayer. <clears throat> and what's the last thing he has to say? Peace be upon Israel. No, he's, he mentioned that in the other. Um, yes, okay. So I'm marking peace. So these are songs of ascents going up. And so uh, in, ver in uh, chapter 22, in Psalm 122, sorry, in Psalm 122, um, it said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May peace be within your walls. And I will now say, may peace be within you. And, uh, yeah, so I am going to mark that. 
Okay, and so if you're a if you're if you're ascending up to to um as and this did not get recorded. We talked about <clears throat> how long a procession, how like if 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 Israel was commanded to go up to to Jerusalem at certain times of the year, then there would there could be great caravans of people, like great convoys of people, but they would have to take along some food and their little lamb that they're going to take for sacrifice. They might have their families and their grand. There, there would be this whole procession of people. And I remember Liz uh, pointed out, you know, that when Jesus, when Jesus is, was mentioned in his youth, that his parents had, he, he was gone for three days when they were traveling with this great caravan before they realized he was gone <laughs> or that they got worried about it. And they went back and found him and didn't, yeah, and where he was in the temple. But anyway, um, so this is a big procession of people moving along and it'd be very important to have peace along the road. And, and we missed all of this uh, on the recording and I'm going to go back, you know, because in 123, it talks about, um, uh, uh, looking to the Lord for his grace, all the while there are people who are filled with contempt. They've had it up to here with the contemptuousness of people who are mocking them and scoffing. And so we're talking about, you know, in this long procession of people, they're, they're going, then there's guys sitting in their doorway, smoking cigarettes, having a cup of whatever. And, uh, saying, what are you doing going up there to Israel? That's a big, long journey. That's an awful expensive thing to do, you know, ridiculous, you know, and they're having to listen to these taunts along the way. Well, so do we, right? We are on our way to heaven because this is earthly home is not our home. And, uh, we, uh, we have all those. And so here it, it says in verse four, do good to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts, but as for those who turn aside to their crooked ways. So if you're walking along in a procession of people and this guy yelling out in the tavern, come on over here, or there's a prostitute over there saying, come on in, you know, turning aside to their wicked ways. Um, the Lord will lead them away with the doers of iniquity. Um, we don't, our world, our pastors do not teach uh, very often anymore as they did in my childhood about the the wages of sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But we don't talk about the wages of sin. Well, there are wages for sin in the now. There are some consequences that hit you pretty badly. And there are a lot of people, including myself, probably yourself too, Ren, that live with the consequences of sin that we've done in the past. And we are forgiven of that sin. We are not we're not held captive anymore. We are not, um, we are not, how do we say that? Um, um, we're not condemned in it because we've repented of it. We've turned to the Lord and he's cleaning us up. He's cleansed us from that sin and he keeps on cleaning us up. So we're not condemned and we don't have to walk around. I mean, it, some of our sin was shameful. It was horrible. Well, all sin is shameful, but some of it brought more shame upon us and upon our families and all of that. And we live with the consequences of that until we go to heaven. But, you know, we're not going to be led away with the doers of iniquity because the Lord has redeemed us. No. And, and he's redeeming all of that time and all of those things to praise him. Thank you, Lord. Peace be upon Israel. And uh, of course, you know, the Bible, you know, it has to do with the timetable of Israel. So we don't get carried away in this politics. Uh, and I'm not in any way implying that we should not always stand up for righteousness and to uh, support and uh, help leaders who are in their best way that they can, uh, preserving righteousness. But that's not where our hope and our faith lies. Just let's just say that. 
I'm not saying that we shouldn't be involved in these processes as, as salt and light and preservative in this culture. We should. And uh, particularly now as the time gets darker and darker and wickedness increases because we see that. We see, I've seen wickedness increase since I was a child. It's terrible. I think we both have. It's just... Yep. Well, that's what the Lord said would happen. And I don't, I don't believe it's going to get any better until he comes again to rule and reign on earth, which is, no, which is not now. <laughs> and I don't believe that we are ushering in a new kingdom. That's his business because the word tells us that there are great and terrible times coming. So be prepared, everyone be prepared. We are in the birth pangs. We are seeing the long shadow that it's casting of the terrible things that God is the judgment that God is going to bring upon this earth. Read the book. <laughs> we know the end. Definitely. Okay. It's not time for us to talk about that <coughs> here and now. And as we record, Adrian and I are now starting our long weekend. I didn't even put your name up on there on the screen. Boy, I'm so ignorant. <laughs> I always have to do something wrong in these uh, programs. Anyway, let's close in prayer. And uh, I hope everyone has been blessed by our discussion today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you did not leave us as orphans here on the earth. You sent your Holy Spirit to help us live in a manner that is pleasing to you and that is fruitful. And uh, we are ever mindful that, oh, The world gets worse and worse, but none of this takes you by surprise. And there's nothing new in terms of wickedness under the sun. We know that your judgment has fallen on the earth in the past and it will fall again. And I just pray, Lord, that you would cause your people to rise up with uh, hearts of truth and to stand firm in the faith, holding out your word and our Savior Jesus Christ, as the way, the truth, and the life by which no one can, uh, except by him, no one can come to you. And Father God, I just uh, pray that you would keep us, keep our eyes focused on the prize, on the goal, and the upward call in Jesus Christ as we uh, go out into our day the next day. And uh, Lord, Um, We are just trusting you for your way of escape from the snares of the evil one who wants to uh, trip us up and throw us into the ditch and get us all muddy. But Lord, even if we do, even if that happens, we know that we can come to you and you will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so we just ask that you would do good to those who are good in those and uh, to those who are upright in their hearts. And may peace be upon Israel, in Jesus' name, for his sake. Amen. All right, you guys, it's been a real slice, and we'll see you in the next one. God bless.